or those d electrons, sometimes they don't use them at all. All righty. Um, okay, so how to write the configuration of a specific element. How to identify a stable atom from an electron configuration. All right, we know that over here in the noble gas column, uh, atoms have achieved their octet. They've achieved eight electrons in their outer shell. That would be S and P electrons. Two S's, six P's, total of eight electrons. So for any given element, the very best, most stable configuration ends in P6. It could be, say, 2S2, 2P6. You might just see it written as S2, P6. But that's the highest, or that's the most stable configuration, no matter what energy level you're in. The next best option is to have S2, D10. So say 4S2, 3D10. That's a common example for zinc. S2, D10. Because it, this fills up the uh, energy level from before, it accounts for the orbital overlap and everything. But sometimes, we're, we can't even get that stable. Uh, but there is another uh, partially stable arrangement that turns up within this D block. We don't talk about it so much in the F block, um, I think because their properties of those elements are also very similar. But we do see this in the D block. And that also harkens back to Hunt's rule, where we're putting one electron in each available orbital before they double up. The next best, uh, arrangement for stability would be S1D5. So something like 4S1, for an example, 3D5. It doesn't have to be just energy level 4, 3. It could be in, you know, uh, 5, 4, or 6, 5 as well. Uh, but these are a common example. This would be the element uh, chromium that would end 4S1, 3D5. And we talked about chromium and copper being those exceptions where they steal an electron to put it in the d orbital to get one in each. And I guess I should have mentioned another uh, stable arrangement before this one. You could have S1D10. That would technically be better than S1D5. So um, of all the stable arrangements, this would be the least stable of them. And then this one, and then this one. But P6 is ultimately, something ending in P6 is ultimately the best. Going on to test hint number 20. How to identify an element from its electron configuration. Okay, so we'll give you the whole configuration for an element. You have to tell me which one it is. Well, if you can write a configuration, you can do this easily. If I say 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3, you should be able to say 3p3, it ends in that. I gotta go to the third energy level, p block, and count over three elements. That's phosphorus. If we go big and say uh, xenon in brackets, and then 6s2, 4f14, uh, 5d3, okay? So we had 6s2, um, sorry, 4f14, and then 5d3, that's tungsten. Sorry, tantalum. I'm over one. I'm looking at one table in the back of the room and, and a different one. Slightly different arrangement on this table uh, up here in front. Test hint number 22. No, 21, sorry. How to write the electron configuration for a specific element. You've been practicing and practicing and practicing this. Again, I should be able to give you any element on the table. You should be able to write its configuration in electron configuration form like this, orbital notation with the arrows, and you should also be able to do the electron dot. Keep that in mind for your honors page. You'll be doing a lot of that. Test hit number 22, what an octet is. Well, that's just going to be the definition of an octet. When you have full S and P orbitals, we've got two electrons that can fit in the S. We can have up to six electrons that can fit in the P orbitals. We get eight electrons, the octet. You know that from music as well. That's the most stable configuration. It's basically just a definition question. Test hint 23, 24, and 25. These are actually short answer questions. And 23, how to identify an element from its electron configuration and write its electron dot notation. And really, these three test hints are very similar. 
you should be able to write all three kinds of notation for any element that I would give you. Um, you've got your periodic table, you've got two on the wall, there'll actually be a partial one on the test, um, and they will be elements that are really not as challenging as what you're going to see on your honors page. You're going to be doing something similar on the honors page as well. Please know the difference between electron configuration notation, which would be this, like our 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, say for the element neon. Uh, that's our electron configuration notation. And then the orbital notation for that same element, where we draw a line to represent the orbital, we label what kind it is, and then we use arrows instead of exponents. Uh, 1s, 2s with two electrons. We have the 2p orbital, there are three of them. They line up on the x, y, and z axis. And when we have six electrons in there, I like to follow Hunt's rule every time I draw these, and separate them out first, and then go back and double up. So that's our orbital notation for neon. And then our electron dot notation shows the highest energy level electrons. For this element, the highest energy level is two. So I'm looking at this as the valent shell. And I need to designate all of those electrons. There are two, four, six, eight. I'm going to put my two s orbital electrons here, one in the px, py, pz, and then I'm going to go double up again, px, py, pz. Uh, you saw Mr. Rosengarten explain in the video how to write electron dot notation this way. You saw a couple other video clips where they automatically start by spreading out the dots, and that's okay if you do that too. Um, I learned it this way, so I, I kind of go with that out of habit, and I want to emphasize the difference between the S and P orbitals. Okay. Thinking ahead to your honors page. Now, this honors page is going to cover the whole chapter, and you're going to have to write all sorts of different kinds of notation for elements. You're definitely going to see uh, the elements that are the exceptions. Think about chromium and copper and what you learned about them and stealing electron from it, the s orbital to put it in the d. You're also going to have to go back to the first part of the chapter and use the Bohr equation to calculate the values at energy levels, say 1 to 10 for a hydrogen atom. You're going to uh, use the E equals H nu or HF equation to figure out the differences in energy for specific jumps. You are going to have some basic definition questions on this one. Uh, I think you'll find that this one is uh, more, uh, has more definition questions than any of the honors pages that you've seen so far. You'll have to write some configurations like this, like I said, uh, but you do have to know uh, the beginning of the chapter as well. Make sure you know from this half of the chapter the difference between alpha uh, principle, Pauli exclusion principle, and Hunt's rule. Make sure you can define and describe those. You should know what quantum numbers are what quanta or photons are. And that's all I can remember off the top of my head right now. So those are the only hints you're going to get for your honors page. Um, but it is going to cover the whole chapter. Good luck. Happy studying. I hope you stepped up and watched these early uh, so you can be more prepared as we go through the chapter.